Hey guys, it's Jennifer Perkins, and this is the Creative Queso Podcast. This is the place where we talk about the business of being creative and the creativity behind running a business. Whether you have your own DIY empire or have never even had the nerve to list a single thing in your Etsy store, this podcast will have something for you. I promise. Every week, I chat with authors, knitters, illustrators, store owners, watercolor artists, podcasters, blah, 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 and more. The thing they all have in common is they all make a living off of their creativity. And the Creative Queso podcast is here so that you can do it too. I believe in you. Yes, I do. Today, we're going international. That's right. Grab your passports because my guest is coming to you from Stockholm, Sweden. Teacher, speaker, author, and illustrator extraordinaire Andrea Pippins is actually from the U.S., but she is currently living and working abroad. You might recognize Andrea's work from one of her many books that she has authored, like Becoming Me, an interactive journal for young women to color, doodle, and brainstorm their way into a creative life, the I Love My Hair coloring book, a coloring book featuring her illustrations celebrating various hairstyles and textures, or We Inspire Me, which is a collection of essays, interviews, and advice on cultivating and empowering one's own creative community. I knew Andrea, well, I didn't like know her, know her, but you know, I internet knew her as we do. I knew Andrea back when she was on her trend spotting blog, Fly Girl, and I was still a member of the Naughty Secretary Club. She always had an eye for color, art, and style, and eventually, after a master's degree, jobs at Hallmark and Nickelodeon, and teaching on the college level, she has found her sweet spot as an illustrator. Beyond her own books, Andrea has illustrated for Oprah's Magazine O, The New York Times, Lenny Letter, as well as other books like Young Gifted in Black and Step Into Your Own Power. Okay, enough gushing about Andrea's accolades and awesomeness because, you know, I could be here for days or we could just listen to her tell her journey herself. So, Andrea, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be speaking with you after all these years. I know. We were saying that we have known each other since, like, you were the flight girl and I was the naughty secretary back when we we had pen names. I know. And I, and I mentioned our OG-ness. Exactly. Um, the blogosphere. So cool. I know from like literally from way back when, and, you know, I was thinking though, like that's kind of, I always associated you with that. And then for some reason, I always had a connection too with you in my mind with Urban Outfitters and Free People. Was that, did you work for them or was that because you were in Philly or where did I get that from? Um, maybe because I did do one project with the Free People folks. Um, I did a, like a limited series of illustrated Converse sneakers. Hmm. Um, so that might be, I don't know if you, you saw that or I might've mentioned it in some way, but, um, that was my only connection. Okay. I don't know where I got that from in my mind. Like, I don't know, maybe, I, maybe that's where I found you. Maybe they mentioned you once and then maybe. that's where I originally found your blog. The other thing I was thinking is, you know, that during that time, since your kid's younger than mine, I you know, kind of lost track of time as one does when your kids are little. <laughs> so it's like, you know, that's why I was like having that hard time. Like, that's the same Andrea, right? Like I was having a hard time making that connection because when I knew you, your blog was like trend spotting and, mm-hmm. you know, I'd find all kinds of cool clothes and art and jewelry. And then, you know, fast forward to now, and obviously I know you more as an illustrator. Um, can you talk about when that transition kind of started to happen when you started going from like, blogging trend spotter over to like hey I'm gonna do my own thing (laughs) right oh my gosh it's so when I think back to like wow I was living a completely different life in a completely different world back then um when I started the blog I was working at tv land Nick at night there were two cable networks that were combined together um and then 
during that time, during that early like blogging season, I decided to go back to school to get my master's so that I could teach graphic design on the college level. And um, still working on the blog then, and you know, spending my time taking my my graduate courses, and then eventually graduating and started teaching. And I taught for five years graphic design, and um, it was during that that period that I started to have an itch to do something a little bit different. Um, I was doing some design work on the side. I was freelancing and. Every now, every now and then, there would be a illustration and illustration project that would pop up, and I would, you know, really have a lot of fun with that. And then I was also doing my own personal work. And it was 2013 that I was like, you know what, this is maybe something that I should try pursuing uh, full time, and kind of, you know, moving away from teaching full time because, you know, I was doing the design work, the freelance work and teaching and it was really almost like two full-time jobs happening at the same time and it was a lot to manage mm-hmm. um, for myself and I I just felt like you know let me just give it a try and see what happens now you know I, I say it in a, in a very kind of oh let's just do it but it took some time for me to make that transition but that was the I guess the beginning of that idea and then, you know, um, preparing for that leap took about, my goodness, I think it took about six months to get to that point. Yeah. It's actually, well, I resigned because as a professor or assistant professor, I had to, you know, tell them early enough so they could prepare for the next semester, but I resigned in February and then my last job or my last and class was in May, so I had that time to kind of, you know, prepare, save money, um, use up all of my health insurance, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, go to the doctor and all that uh-huh. stuff. So, um, I'm looking for an opportunity or wanting to create an opportunity where I can teach, but in more casual setting. So whether it's teaching workshops, you know, doing more Skillshare. Um, I don't know if it's like virtual counseling. I'm not sure yet, but it's something that I'm really Mm -hmm. thinking about as I move forward and expanding my work. I I think you'd be awesome at that. Cause like you said, your, your illustration does like do such a beautiful job of like illustrating empowerment for lack of a better term. So I'm sure like I saw your Skillshare class and I was like, Ooh, (laughs) I need to add that one to the list. (laughs) Yeah. It's a, it's so much fun. And you know what? I learned so much from, students, you know, people who are Mm -hmm. taking part in this kind of exchange of of knowledge. Um, So for me, I get so much from from that interaction. Yeah. And, you know, and going back to that, your book, The We Inspire Me, it's like teaching is such a like, I hate to use the word synergy, but it is, you Mm -hmm. know, like working with students and sometimes you get as much out of it as a teacher as the students do. For sure. Okay, so you so you decided to kind of quit the teaching job. Mm-hmm. And then when I was like researching you, you know, I, I heard there was this like, you know, kind of this like legendary story of, you know, you just like decided to up and one day quit your day job and take this leap of faith. And then magically you got a book deal. But, you know, yes. it looks that way. On, we, it looks that way on paper, but we all know there's like always a lot of hard work leading Absolutely. up to that moment. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, oh my goodness. Cause for years before that I had been submitting proposals left and right. Cause I, it was something that I really wanted to do was to have a book pub- published. Um, so I would say almost maybe seven, seven or eight years of submitting and being rejected. Um, so, you know, it just, it was that experience that led up to finally getting something accepted. And it, it really happened because I was um, invited to partake in the ladies drawing night. I don't know if you ever heard about that, that mm-hmm. project, but um, with Julia Rothman, uh, Rachel Cole and Leah Raina Gorin, I think that's how you say her name. Um, but basically they were inviting guest artists to come and sit with them and talk about different uh, topics relating, related to drawing. And they invited me 
And um, Rachel Cole, who's an art director at Random House, she's like, hey, does anyone have any ideas for children's books? And I remember sitting there like, oh my gosh, like what? Like, of course I have ideas, but I, you know, this is all happening in my, in my mind. Uh-huh. Um, but I didn't say anything then. And later on, this is like months later, I sent her an email and we had been in touch a little bit, you know, before then. And oh, what I forgot to mention is that the, the guest artists were coming to draw with them because they were working on a book called Ladies Drawing Night. So they would feature these guest artists and talk about their work and, and, and you know, their advice or tips related to drawing. Um, so I had, you know, been in touch with her over a period of time. And then finally I was like, okay, you know, she asked if we had any ideas, I'm going to send her some ideas, you know, for some books. And I didn't think anything of it. I was just like, you know, whatever happens, happens fantastic and this is when the coloring book craze was happening Mm -hmm. like 2015 and um I had seen a a beautiful coloring book at the bookstore and the museum and I was like oh my gosh I would love to do something like this so that was one of the ideas that I had submitted to to Rachel and surprisingly she's she was like oh these are really interesting let me pass them on to my editor nope not nothing's promised, you know, don't get too excited, you know, we'll see what happens. And like literally two weeks later, I had a book deal and oh. it, like you said, it, it felt like it all happened overnight, but after years of submitting book proposals, after years of being rejected and, you know, doing all this work for myself, you know, drawing and creating like a, a portfolio of all these different things that I could do, I think all of that work had led up to that moment where it seemed like it happened overnight. Yeah, it's never quite as like magical as it sounds on paper. I mean, it makes for a good podcast mm-hmm. story. Yeah, now, I know how that goes where it's like, no, there's actually a lot of work that went into this happening. Yeah, no, I remember when your coloring book came out, I was like, ooh, so cute. See, I am that person that like me and map colors, like, I don't know, they've never like... I got to have something chunky like a crayon. So like all the yeah, adult color, yeah. but, but, <laughs> but like my kid, she is like, get, like she goes to art class and she's like, can I use your Prisma colors? Because I can't be bothered with these Crayola brands. Oh yeah. 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 I, I love the Prisma colors. They're my favorite. Yeah. yeah. She's too good for them, but no, that's an amazing story. You know, and it kind of like in a weird way, it reminded me and it loops back around to, um, another one of your books, which is your, the, we inspire me, Mm -hmm. you know, because that book from what I, you know, gather is kind of about like that community and that networking, you know, and if you hadn't gone to that ladies drawing night or that networking event, exactly, you know, those things might not have happened. Like, do you have that? Do you still do that kind of thing? Like they're in Stockholm or do you have like an online Mm, community such a good question um it's something that I'm trying to cultivate now so um since having Issa well prior to having Issa I was newly I was you know pregnant in Stockholm (laughs) trying to get work done so I didn't make the time to really socialize and then after he was born, it's like, you know, newborn, settling into new city, everything was just happening all at once. Um, so I would say it's been fairly recent that I'm starting to connect and meet with people again um, here in the city, but also, you know, virtually making time to have phone conversations or uh, WhatsApp, Skype, whatever mm-hmm. the platform. Um, and I, I have to say it's been it's it's been a challenge it's also been very interesting. It, well, I'll go back a second. So a challenge in the sense that, um, you know, there's a time difference. There's the separation from my community that community that's already been established in the U.S. Um, so kind of starting from scratch, starting all over again here has been somewhat of a challenge, but also a challenge in a great way because it's forcing me to, to kind of rethink how I cultivate community you know it's really easy when you're um a a part of a certain culture or understanding so here i'm you know kind of learning the the cultural nuances and trying to figure out how to navigate those different circles um so it can feel isolating but it can also feel for me it feels like okay you know this is something 
something different, something new I have to figure out. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, and your son's so young. I mean, you know, my kids are eight and 10 and I still don't, you know, (laughs) I'm still a recluse. (laughs) (laughs) And that's the thing too. I'm completely comfortable with being in. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh, me too. In the house, uh, doing work, you know, listening to some podcasts, drawing, totally fine with me too. I know. And those podcasts, see, they trick you because you like feel like you're there and like hanging out with them. And you're like, (laughs) I am totally social and hanging out with people. Like I was talking to people in my head all day long on podcasts. (laughs) Yes, (laughs) absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you know, and it's too, like since, you know, going back to when you were doing more the fly girl stuff and I was doing naughty secretary, you know, that's back when people would leave these long lengthy comments, Mm -hmm. you know, and you'd have these whole dialogues with people. So you were kind of having your own little online networking, you know, and I'm still friends with people that I met via my blog. And I think in a way that's why for me personally, I've brought back the podcast Mm -hmm. so I can have, you know, I'm not going to leave like a giant comment on your blog anymore, but no. now I can have, now I can have a podcast chat with you. So. Yeah. I love that, that it, it opens up to new ways of connecting with your community mm-hmm. for sure. And um, to go back to the, we inspire me, that was one of my intentions was to ce- celebrate my community. And a lot of those people were people that I met through my blog um, so I wanted to talk about how important it was for me to make those connections mm-hmm. um, and, you know, celebrating and highlighting the people who I also often feel like they don't get the shine that they deserve. Um, and also creating a resource for other people who want to to build and cultivate that community. So, yeah, that was the whole thinking behind that book. Yeah, the whole, like, just, yeah, the, all of that is, like, really important. You know, it's like I talked to um, Amy Tan last mm-hmm. week, I guess. And do you know Amy Tangerine? You know who I'm talking about? I know that name, but I don't know her. Like, yeah, she her. does. Um, she had, like, Craft a Life You Love, like, the book and stuff. But she was telling me, like, she's in, um, oh, what's the word? It's too early. It's going to escape me. Like, a mentor group. You know, like, one uh, of those ones where it's like, oh, a mastermind. It's the okay. other M word. I haven't had enough coffee. You know, like, she's in, like, a mastermind group. And, you know, and then, you know, I hear lots of people saying they're going to these, like, networking events. I'm trying to make myself, like, you know, actually brush my hair and brush my teeth, put on a bra and go out and like attend some of these things. <laughs> it's hard to leave I, the house, but I you know, it is, such an, it is such an important thing. It reminds me of that. Like, have you ever heard the rule of five where it's like, you're the combination, like mm-hmm. you personally, yeah. Or the combination of the five people you hang out with the most. I was like, all right. So I got my husband, I got an eight year old and I got a 10 year old. Like <laughs> who are my other two people going to be? I need to find yes. some awesome people. Yes. It's so true. And I, that's another thing with the whole, you know, challenge side of being here Um, to some level. I'm like, oh my gosh, am I, am I going to fall behind or not have access to the opportunities and resources that I'd like to have access to because I'm here, because I'm not a part of a community yet, because I'm so far away from, you know, those communities that I have established before and had worked so hard to establish before. So that's another thing that I'm kind of grappling with, you know, being new to this town and to the creative scene here. Yeah. I mean, you're still, you know, I think everything is so virtual and I know you just, when did you do your keynote at Icon? That was uh, almost a year ago. That was July, 2018. Well, I think if you're getting invited to do the keynote at Icon, that you're still, you know, <laughs> finger on the pulse just a little bit. <laughs> I wouldn't lay in bed nights worrying no. about it too much. <laughs> Is there like any other illustrators or teachers that you see in the creative space that you kind of think, you know, are killing it or kind of doing like a combo of both that you really like the way they're doing it? Um, I would have to say Andy Pizza. Mm-hmm. Um, I met him at Icon last year. We were um, invited to a dinner and we're seated next to each other. And I cracked up the whole time talking to him. (laughs) Um, We had a really great conversation. And then we, um, he invited me to, to be on his podcast. And since then, you know, been following his work, been following his message. And I think 
that there is a, a wonderful, and sorry, I'm going to use this word, but um, authenticity to his message and him sharing his experiences and this really genuine interest in helping the creative community. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that what he's doing, what what he's sharing is really, really beautiful. And I sense that from our very first conversations. I think he's definitely doing that for the illustration community and beyond just, you know, anyone who's interested in pursuing visual arts. Yeah, no, he's definitely, he's one of those people that's like, you know, he's one of my like podcast best friends, but he doesn't know it. Like I definitely, his energy and his enthusiasm and his like genuine, like, you know, desire for people to do well and be creative comes through in the podcast. So I totally agree. Does Andy teach online classes or does he just teach, does he teach college classes? You know, honestly, I'm not exactly sure like what he does. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that he teaches, um, but I know that he uses his, all of his platforms as a form of teaching. That's true. That's another way to look at it. And that's kind of what you're thinking is using your platform yeah, I, I guess I'm thinking or looking at all avenues of what's mm-hmm. possible, um, whether, you know, it's exploring in person or using virtual as a way to, you know, expand. So I'm, I'm not just doing it here in Stockholm, at least for now. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of just brainstorming. I'm in a space of like downloading and mm-hmm. kind of thinking about, you know, what, what this could be. So I'm not sure. I'm not even sure. I mean, you know, teaching is something that I love and it is one way that I can I can serve, but I'm not even certain that that is the way that it's going to be. It, it, you know, if it's through teaching. Mhm. You're just kind of putting it back out there into the universe. Exactly. Like, you know, if it if it comes back around to that, like I'm open. Exactly. I like it. So, you know, another thing I wanted to touch on is that you recently did a visual essay for Grace Bonnie's new magazine, Good Company. Oh, yes. In your uh, 20 lessons you've learned and are still learning about money as a freelance artist or illustrator, can you maybe share like a couple of the highlights for the listeners? Mm, sure. Um, let's see if I can remember some some of the good ones. Um, well, I can share the the biggest lesson that I learned, and that was um, that like the idea of working harder or more does not necessarily bring financial abundance or prosperity. Um, I think that it's a myth that has been sold to us. You know, this idea of oh, you're a hard worker, and if you work hard, you get this, you get that, but it's not true. Right. So we, we know a lot of people who work really hard and live in poverty and we work, we know people who don't work at all and who are very wealthy. And of course, you know, I'm just talking about financial um, success or financial abundance. Um, so walking away from that narrative or just not believing that narrative and figuring out for me, you know, what is financial success? What is you know success in general for me? Um, and how do I want to spend my work life and definitely not, you know, working 24 seven or working when the baby's asleep or, you know, working on the weekend, that's not something that I wanted to be doing. So, you know, restructuring that idea for me or creating my own, you know, work balance for my life was a really big lesson as I you know, started this kind of freelance path. Um, and then, my goodness, what are some other things? Oh, <laughs> um, recreating a money mantra. I don't know if that's exactly what I, I did for the illust- or said for the illustration, but um, you know, growing up with these different beliefs and these different ideas about money or the lack of money, you know, within my household, um, and seeing how that was being carried through into my adult life, and learning to let go of those money mantras and creating new ones that were more affirming and more um, coming from a place of abundance instead of lack. And, and I guess Mm -hmm. giving myself space to really believe that I was, you know, deserving of having abundance. So um, that was, you know, something else that I've, I've learned in this, 
this process of, you know, managing my own money and working with a, an accountant and, you know, planning out the financials for my business over a year or five years or whatever. So, you know, something that I'm still, I'm still trying to get a grasp on and still learning about, but those are some things that I, you know, have really, I guess. Learned so far. I, I, yeah, learned so far and just kind of, um, were really interesting lessons, something that, you know, it took, mm-hmm. it took for me to kind of embark on this journey of being a freelancer in order to, to realize those things. Yeah. It, have you ever read, um, the You're a Badass series? No. You'd like them. They're like, it's by Jen Sincero, but she has one called like, You're a Badass at Making Money. But one of the things she talks about is like that money mindset that you grow up with, as opposed to like, how you are now and like when she said that I was like that's so weird like I never thought about it but I do think of money just the exact same way that my parents did Mm -hmm. and it's not you know I grew up total totally middle class but it was always this like well one day our ship's gonna come in or you know this and you know it was always like this money was like out of reach thing rather than like I don't yeah it was just it was a very kind of eye-opening thing about like oh I should be looking at money in a different way. Right, right. And that you have, um, like, you don't have to adopt these ideas. You can create your own or define your own your own path into, you know, financial security. I, thought, I think that was very liberating for me. I'm thinking, oh, okay, you know, I can create for myself what what this is going to look like for myself or for me. Yeah, it's a weird awakening that happens when you're like, wait, I don't have to believe the exact same thing my parents did. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not like you turn 18 and you realize that. Like, sometimes it's a little bit later that you're just like, whoa, Mm -hmm. parents are just people. They don't know everything. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So, you know, so speaking of mantras, um, one of the other things I wanted to touch on here towards the end is I wanted to go a little woo-woo with you. Um. I, I love me the woo-woo and, you know, I hear you talk about like abundance and, you know, money mantras and things like that. And then, you know, I did my research and I listened to some other podcasts, read some other interviews, and I heard you talk about things like emitting light and setting intentions mm-hmm. and manifesting. So I gathered that you're big on, you know, setting goals and intentions. So now do you do that for yourself? Like yearly, monthly, weekly, like how often are you kind of setting these goals? Mm. Um, well, definitely at the beginning of the year, I try to, um, you know, sit and think about, you know, what do I want to achieve or create in the year to come? And I always start the new year with a, a word. And mm-hmm. that's kind of where the, I, I kind of go to for inspiration um, and then every month I also, I kind of, you know, I go back and revisit those goals or I, yeah. So, uh, every month I, um, take some time to revisit and honestly, or to revisit, revisit my goals. And I, I do it at the new moon and oh, the full moon. Extra woo woo. Extra woo woo, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, at the new moon, you're supposed to plant seeds and see how they are, how they grow or expand over the next six months. Um, and then the full moon taking some action uh, towards those those seeds that were planted. Um, so you know, I try to I try to do that. And to be honest with you, I'm not that much of a planner. Like I write down intentions. I write down things that I want to achieve and some goals and I might, you know, jot down a few things here and there that I can do to make those things happen. Um, but journaling and, you know, thinking about those ideas and, um, visualizing them, doing meditation, doing prayer, and then surrendering and letting those things kind of go. I feel like that is what really helps me manifest the things that have come into my life so it's like this weird balance and I'm still trying to 
can you know work through this because it's very hard for me to surrender. Mm-hmm. But it's this weird balance of you know planning and setting intentions, setting goals, trying to make things happen, but also being flexible enough to let it go and being open to other things that could happen. Mm-hmm. So, or maybe if it didn't happen in the exact way you envisioned it. Exactly. You know, but happened in another way. I see that in a lot of ways where people are, you know, maybe envision something or trying to manifest something and like it comes to them, right. but it comes to them in a different way. You know, and it might take them a hot second to be like, oh, this is kind of the same thing, but it's just a different. Exactly. It's just a different exactly. route. And that is something, um, have you ever read the the book, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success by Deepak Chopra? Mm-hmm. I have, yeah. Yeah, I, I go back to that. I would say maybe once a year. And um, I don't know what number it is, but it's the the spiritual law of letting go. Or what is it? Um, oh, the law of least effort. Mm-hmm. And that is the most difficult one for me because and this also goes back to that myth of hard work, right? So this idea that you have to make things happen, you have to do this and do that and, and pitch and, you know, send out all your um, messages to all your contacts and, you know, do all these things. And of course you have to do work. Of course you have to um, have some kind of action plan, but having that balance of, you know, things just kind of flowing through you and it just happens as it needs to happen is something mm-hmm. that I'm really always trying to navigate. Like how much do I need to to do on my own and how much do I need to let God or, you know, the universe just, you know, do it for me. Exactly. Yeah. It's funny you bring that up. I keep like, that book keeps coming up in my mind. Like I need to like revisit it and go through it. That really is a good book. Just like even if it wasn't about success, mm-hmm. you know, that Deepak, anybody that hangs out with Oprah, you know, he's going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so true. You know, he's going to have profound things to say, but no. Okay. Absolutely. So that's, that's interesting. Do you mind sharing? Is there any like, like either like maybe your word this year or any like goal that you're like, you know, in particular, you're kind of working on? Yes, my word for this year, for 2019, was expansion or expand. Um, So just thinking about how I want to expand my work and expand, you know, my business um, aesthetically. You're thinking about how do I push myself and how my visuals look. And then also the kind of experiences I want to create with my work. I think I mentioned that. Um, a little earlier, but, you know, I'm interested in doing work for film um, and large scale installations. So, you know, I've, I've been focusing a lot on, uh, I would say like print and illustrations for books. So thinking about how my illustrations could grow or, you know, live in different ways on different platforms. So expansion in that way, um, and then, of course, business-wise, thinking about, you know, is it time to hire somebody to help with the workload? Um, is, do I need to establish my business here in Stockholm? Because right now it's still, you know, a, an entity in the U.S. Do I want to have something that, you know, operates in both countries? I don't know. But that's those are the, the things I was thinking about when I came up with that word. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I can see why kind of one foot, one foot in Stockholm and one foot still over here where that would be a, you know, kind of a push and pull mm-hmm, for sure. <laughs> about your business that way. <laughs> Definitely. Interesting. Yeah. And, you know, I'm sure like I go through that with my business, the like expanding, but I'm sure as someone who, since yours is so based on like your art and your illustration, like it's a tricky, it's a tricky space to go when you start working with more I, I'm sure when you start working with businesses who are going to have like opinions and edits and, mm-hmm. you know, all of those things that might, that might take a revisit to Deepak when you have to start dealing with that more. For sure. I'm going to start wrapping it up here so we can, we can let you go and get on with your day. But I do have a couple of like quick lightning round questions for you before we part ways. So one, who are a few of your favorite Instagram feeds? Like the ones that you just like love following? Oh my gosh. I hope I don't mess up 
the names um, because there's one that I'm completely obsessed with and I have to look because I want to say the right. Um, So Black Market Vintage, they um, sell antiques and ephemera from, I I would say, like African American history. Oh, interesting. Black Africana or Black... um, I don't know how, what to call it, but basically it's, you know, uh, magazines, vintage magazines, any, anything from artwork to decorative pieces. Um, I'm always, I'm obsessed. I buy stuff from them. I like all their images. I follow all their stories. Love them. Um, somebody else I'm inspired by on Instagram um, oh my gosh. I feel like I'm completely blanking out because there's so many people that I, I love and admire and I can't think of anybody right now. Um Well that's okay. You can also send them to me and I can put them in the show notes. I do that same thing where I'm like, there's that one person and they always post this, but I never really pay attention to what their actual name is. Yeah, right. <laughs> um <laughs> I oh I can, for better or for worse. I can share Love is Wise. Um, okay. Her, her name is, I'm looking is Love up. is Wise. And the handle is Love is Wise uh, Ilu. So I, I can send this to you because I think it'll be a little complicated. Oh, I know who. I You know what's funny? I know exactly who that is. I just was on her page yesterday. I don't know how I got through there, but I, I love that too. I'm just looking. It is good. I love her color. Yeah, she's a great color sense. I'm scrolling and liking as we talk. No, yeah, she is amazing. Anybody? Oh, I'll give you one more. Um, she, give it to me. She's a Brazilian artist. Uh, Sila Costa. C-Y-L-A-C-O-S-T-A. And she does amazing lettering. But also her illustrations are just fantastic. Well, that is impressive lettering. Lettering just blows my mind. I mean, not that the whole illustration thing doesn't, but lettering in particular. Like, I took a lettering class, and I was like, oh, my gosh, there's, like, so many rulers involved. (laughs) Yes. I was like, this is, like, why I hate sewing. Like, it's so technical. I didn't realize. (laughs) I thought people just like magically knew how to space things. Oh yes, she she does have beautiful things. Yeah, she's super talented. Well, good new people for me to follow. All right, so here is the next lightning round question, and you know you can be as lightning or not as lightning. So you know you have like all your books are amazing, but uh, you know as you kind of mentioned earlier, a lot of your books, you know, kind of like are geared towards empowering women or illustrations primarily of women. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like now that you have a little boy, you might start doing more like dude stuff, little dude stuff? Yes. And actually my next two books are um, dedicated to him. One actually features him. Um, so it's like a day in the life of, the, of a baby. It's called Hey Baby. And the other one, um, we still haven't settled on the, on the title yet, but it's about different attributes that I wish for him. And there's an illustrated version of him or version of him that's inspired by him. Oh, that sounds so cute. No, I, it's funny that you say that because like with my little boy, you know, you go to Target and it's like, you know, you see all this stuff that's like girls only, yeah. girls rule, and da 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 da. And you know, when I was younger, you know, in my twenties, and you know, I listened to Bikini Kill as much as the next guy. You know, I was all like, yeah. But like now that I have a little boy, like he'll be like, why does it say that? Yeah. And, like his little best friends are girls, and it just like makes me sad. I'm just like, oh, why can't we include the little boys too? Yeah, I, I feel strongly about the the conversation that's happening with this, you know, whole movement of you know, empowering girls and women, you know, it's fantastic and we need that. But there is this weird pendulum swing where it's like, okay, we're just going to empower girls and women, but exclude men and boys. And it should be both. It should, Mm -hmm. there's space to empower both. No, I completely agree. Yeah. And there should be, you know, because little boys, you know, they're not like intrinsically bad. Exactly. (laughs) So, well, good. Well, it's good to talk to another little boy mom that's like, <laughs> we need, like, fun boy stuff, too. 
Don't don't forget the little boys. They're awesome. They are. All right. So, last question: If I came to see you, where would we go for queso? Or is there even queso in Stockholm? Ooh, where would we go for queso? I don't know. I know there's a <laughs> a cheese. What are you? What, there's a name for it. There's a cheese place. A cheesery? I don't know. What do you call a cheese place? There's like a fancy name for it. I can't think of it. But there is a place in, there's like this department store called NK here. And they have a food hall. And it's really fancy. And they have a little cheese section. It's super cute. So I would take you there. Ooh, I do like cheese. I mean, melted or not. Yeah, I think. I am a cheese fan. (laughs) What's your favorite? What cheese? Well, you know, it's honestly not. But like in my mind, I was like, and the podcast is going to be called Creative Queso. And then I'm going to interview people in Austin and we're going to eat queso and we're going to talk about queso. I don't know. No, but what's your favorite cheese? Do you have one? Oh, what's my favorite cheese? You know, I don't know that it actually would be queso. I do love a goat cheese. And, you know, I just honestly, I just had some like homemade pretzels with like a beer cheese recently. And they were delightful. Beer cheese. I mean, it's basically like nacho cheese, but with beer in it. Interesting. So it was pretty tasty. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> so, you know, if I came there, we could, you know, have a ladies, ladies drawing night. And then uh, we could uh, have some fancy cheese. That would be delicious and amazing. <laughs> <laughs> delicious and amazing. <laughs> and then the little boys could have a play date. It would be awesome. Aww. Well, Andrea, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with thank me. Thank you. This morning slash afternoon. Thank you for making me laugh. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Gosh, thanks for making me laugh and being patient with our technical difficulties. I have had, it's been a good way to kick off my morning. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for your wonderful questions. Great chatting with you. You too. Bye bye. hope you enjoyed that conversation as much as I did. Not sure if you guys picked up on the fact that it was 7 a.m. my time and I was recording with a trash can next to me because I was really ill. And poor Andrea's connection got dropped about 17 times, maybe more, maybe a couple less. However, we were having such a great time chatting, I even forgot that I was sick and we were able to pick right up where we left off each time our call reconnected. Oh, technology. Get all the details and links for this episode over on creativecaso.com where I will have the full show notes. While you're there, be sure to check out this week's Taco About It Tuesday interview. Each week, I'm interviewing another creative business owner so you can hear a story and read one double whammy. This week's interview is with Marie LeBaron of Creative Life Flow Coaching. You might know Marie better as a woman behind the DIY site Make and Takes. In the interview, Marie talks about her transition from blogger with over 450,000 Facebook followers into a life of coaching. Marie is still passionate about crafts and the DIY community. She just also wants to help people create deeper connections and really see one another. Full interview and links to all things Marie on the Creative Queso site. Talk About It Tuesday is just another way for you guys to get inspired about your creative businesses with these stories from even more people that started right where you are today. Just like Andrea's book, We Inspire Me, I'm trying to make Creative Queso a space to empower you in your business, our community as creative content desires, makers, illustrators, and more. Whatever your side hustle or passion business, creativity is creativity and business is business. I'm hoping this podcast is as fun for you to listen to as it is for me to record and talk to all these amazing guests. It's like I'm getting, you know free online classes and mastermind sessions. And I'm just, you know, you guys get to listen in on it. So I know it's awesome for me. Hope it was good for you too, if you know what I mean. So anyway, again, I just hope you're enjoying all these talks about the business of being creative and the creativity behind running a business. If you are and you love it, be sure to tell a friend, leave a review or follow along on any of my social channels. As you know, we can hang out all week long. You can find me as Creative 
Queso or Jennifer Perkins on Instagram. Just depends on if you're feeling business or if you're feeling crafty. I'm like a mullet. Business in the front, crafty party in the back. Plus, I'm around in all the other places. You know, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, the whole, the whole kit and caboodle. So thank you one last time to my guest, Andrea Pippins. Be sure to follow her too at Andrea Pippins. That's A-N-D-R-E-A-P-I-P-P-I-N-S and andreapippins.com. Thank you as always to my producer, Mariah Gossett, who always tolerates me being tardy to the deadline party. Also love to my hubs, Chris Beck, for the jams. And as always, thank you for being here, hanging out, and listening in. I miss you already, but don't worry. I'll be back same time, same place next week, so don't cry for me, Argentina. Dig through the archives if you want more fun with guests like Amy Tangerine, Gabrielle Blair, and Kathy Conamario. They can keep you company until next time.